in full swing, and it's time to step out of the kitchen and get into the backyard. But don't reach for your grilling tools just yet, because today it's all about the smoker. Ooh. So grab a plate and welcome to the Smoke Show. Everything smells so good. I can't wait to see what you've got in that smoker, ladies. Oh, a smoker is a way to cook food at a low temperature in a controlled, smoky environment. It can take a long time to get everything cooked, but the flavor is worth the wait, honey. Just for an FYI, for all of you who don't have a smoker, there are ways to smoke your food at home, on a grill, on the stove top, or even in the oven. Check out thereal.com to find out how. Now, let's get this smoke show started. Yes. Jeannie, what are you smoking? Girl, I got you here. I own a smoker. I love smoking food, you guys. It doesn't get any better than this. I'm making some smoked brisket Woo! tostadas. Yes! Ooh. Okay. So, first things first, let's smoke some meat. Pat your brisket dry with paper towels just like this, and it'll help the dry rub stick to it and give you a perfect crust. Mm -hmm. Now, I put together a dry rub of ingredients. We're talking salt, pepper, paprika, chili powder, and brown sugar. Ooh. Give these a mix just like that. Mm. <laughs> Okay, then rub this mixture all over the brisket so it looks just like this. Look how nice my crust is gonna be for yeah. you, Lonnie. Yeah, that looks good. Then you Yummy. place this meat in the smoker, okay? It will take about 10 hours to reach an internal temperature of around 180 degrees. You can use a meat thermometer for that. At that point, wrap the brisket in tin foil and smoke it for another three hours until it gets to 190 degrees. Let it cool down, slice it up, and voila, it will look like this. Ooh. Ooh. So bomb. Now for the tostada. Take your tostada shells and spread them with refried beans just like this. Fave. And then, my two, my two. And then you want to make sure you get some salsa. Yeah. Okay, like that. <laughs> and then salsa. And then you. Oh, Whoa, that's a lot of salsa. Yes. <laughs> and then Muy you get salsito. some chopped onion like this. Okay, and your smoked brisket on top of it, like so. Ooh. But I'll show you guys. Ooh, it's so it's so PC. You actually have to use a fork. So I'll show you how it'll look when I'm done because you put it in the smoker for a few minutes, so everything gets a nice smoky flavor. When you're done, are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah, yeah. Applause, please. <laughs> it'll look like this. Ooh. And what did you top it off with? A little bit of some queso fresco and some lime juice. So, Lani, give these a taste and let me know what Chef Genie thinks. Oh, I'm happy to do this. Mmm. Mm. It's good. So good. It's good. It's good. No, seriously. Thank let you. me try. It was good. It's so, it's so tender. Mmm. Okay. Nice. All right. I'm good. This is good. What are you, you, you're going to be hard to top. This is hard. <laughs> okay. Lani, what's better than potatoes? Bacon, your favorite, and cheese. Mm. Yes. Mixing those up on a smoker. Yes, okay. <laughs> These are my double smoked potatoes. First, fry yourself some bacon until it's nice and crispy, and then you're gonna set it aside to dry on paper towels. Don't drain the bacon fat, though, from the pan. Mm. You're actually gonna want those for the potatoes. Ooh. All right, so next, you're gonna scrub clean your potatoes just like this, and you're actually gonna pierce them with the fork a few times, brush them with the leftover bacon fat just like this. See that, see that? Flavor, oh, flavor. So you're gonna put yes. that in there, make sure it gets in those holes, wow. just like that. And then you're also gonna sprinkle it with a bit of salt and pepper just like that. Okay. Now it's time for the smoker. Keep them in for about an hour until the skin gets nice and crispy. Once you're done with them, you're gonna let them cool down. Then you're gonna slice them in half. Next, you're gonna take a spoon and you're actually gonna scoop out the insides, leaving about a fourth of the shell, a uh, fourth of an inch thick shell, just like this. You see how there's still a little bit in there? Mm -hmm. Now, once you've scooped four potatoes, put the insides in a bowl like this. Now, in the bowl, you're actually gonna have your bacon, four tablespoons of butter, two chopped scallions, and two cups of shredded cheddar cheese. Mm, That's yummy. what I've got in that here. You're gonna bomb. mix all of this together oh, like so. Oh, so you're gonna yum. get in there, make sure it's mixed evenly. Mm -hmm. Next, you're going to add in a half a cup of sour cream. Ooh. Oh my God, everything. Yes. Just like that, and then again, you're going to add some salt and pepper to the mix. Hold, please. Just like that, voila. Wow. And then you're gonna mix it again, and you're actually gonna scoop this mixture back into the shells. So you're gonna get this in this like oh, that. Yeah. Then you're gonna scoop it and put it right back into your shells, mm -hmm. like so. 
You're gonna add a little bit of butter on the top and pap paprika to top it off. Okay. And then guess what? What? You're gonna take this beautiful thing and you're gonna put it back in the this smoker. <laughs> you're gonna keep them in there until they are browned and bubbling and they are going to look like this. Lonnie, are you ready. ready for this? I'm ready, I'm ready. Ooh, it's too good. Oh, wow. Oh. So good. Look at that. Oh, you see how beautiful oh, this is? Oh my goodness, okay. Mm. Oh. Oh, yeah. Is it good? So oh. good. Tam, okay. we do not have time well, for we yours. Don't, we don't have time for mine. I have a dessert recipe, so you guys have to go to thereal.com to check it out, okay? It's a you good don't recipe. don't want to miss it. It's pecans, chocolate it's chips, one. marshmallows, some butter, some brown sugar. Good thing. It's amazing. I'll tell you what, this is one smoke show I'll be coming back to again and again. Ladies, good job. When it comes to barbecues, what's on the grill is always the star attraction. But even the best burger or steak needs its sides. And you know a good side dish can steal the show. Mm -hmm. Well, today, we're taking some of your basic usual sides and kicking them up a notch. So come on over. We're making barbecue side king. I'll go first. Now, this dish goes perfect with barbecue. It's smoky baked beans. Ooh. Ooh. Start by partially frying 10 slices of smoked bacon in a large, deep sauteed skillet like I've done here, right here. Now, in the bacon oil, you add one small cup of uh, green peppers and a large cup of onions, and you start letting that saute. You hear that sizzle? Yes, mm -hmm. baby. Yes. Sizzle for mama, all right? Yeah. Then saute this for about five minutes until it's nice and tender. Next, you're gonna add your large cans, like three, of pork and beans, or you can use just regular beans without pork if you like that, you know, that's your thing. I ain't gonna judge you. I like bacon, though. All right, then you add one cup of barbecue sauce, a half a cup of brown sugar, a quarter cup of distilled vinegar, A, and two and a half teaspoons of dry mustard. Ooh. That gives it that kick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you start stir it all up there in that Yum pot. me. Get it to going. Mm. Make sure you get it in there good. Because what you're going to do is once it gets all soaked in, you're going to pour it into this 13 by 9 inch square pan here. Oh. Uh, that looks so good. Mm-hmm. Just mm -hmm. like that. And then you add the bacon slices on top. Mm. And you know what? You don't have to use like real bacon. You can use, you know. Turkey bacon. Dare I say it, turkey bacon, yeah. They even have vegan bacon. They have now, you vegan guys. bacon, all that Lonnie. kind of stuff. It is good. And then what you so do good. is you put it in the oven for like two hours at 325 oh. degrees, and eventually the sauce is gonna pop up. Dang. You know, the, the sauce is gonna bubble. Yeah. And that's when you know it's getting done, and the sauce gets syrupy. And after all of that, it should come out like this. Ooh. Now, ladies, you have some over there. How does it taste? It's bomb. Seriously. Why is it just enough of a kick? Nice crispiness to the beans. All right. Adrian, what you got? I love it. All right. Now, you guys, I have something for you to try that's a little on the lighter side. Move over, boring coleslaw. I'm making crazy toasted coleslaw. In a large bowl, you're going to toss in one package of coleslaw, regular coleslaw, mixed like this, like I've already done here. You see that? You mix it up. Bam. And then from there, you're gonna add some chopped green onions, just like that. You're also gonna add in a head of broccoli cut into florets, like this. We're going to actually set this aside. I'm gonna mix that up real good. But then we're gonna set this aside, you guys, and we're gonna hit this up later. Okay. Now, you're gonna melt a half a cup of butter into a large skillet over medium heat, like I have over here. And then, in a bowl, you're gonna crumble up two packs of chicken-flavored dry ramen noodles into a bowl, just like this. So I'm gonna smash it up just a little bit more. Then you're gonna add to this a cup of slivered almonds, just like that. Three, four cups of unsalted sunflower seeds. Unsalted. You're gonna sprinkle in, guys, the seasoning packets that came with the ramen noodles. And you're gonna add your crunchy noodle mix to your skillet. And you're gonna cook it and stir until the noodles and the nuts are toasted, which will be about eh, <laughs> eight minutes. <laughs> so we're gonna let that do what it do. Now, to make the dressing, I've added a half a cup of sugar, a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar, a half a cup of sesame oil, and one and a quarter teaspoon of soy sauce in this mason jar right here. Now, here's the fun part, folks. You're gonna seal it just like that, and what? Shake it! Now, just before serving, you will mix your coleslaw with the nuts and the noodles. So you're gonna put all of that that was right there. 
You're gonna put that in here, girl. Help your sister out. Boom. Just like that. And you're gonna mix this all together. And you guys, when it's all done, your finished product will look a little something like this. Hey! That's good! Now all you have to do is just pour on your dressing and get ready for the flavor. Are you guys loving my crazy toasted cold It's slot? so good! Girl! It's so good! <laughs> this is my plate right here. That's what you didn't know. Who are the people in the back? What, is, what are y'all doing? Those are my cousins. Oh, okay, cousins. <laughs> hey, cousins. But if you don't feel like cooking any of the side dishes for the barbecue, we are going to show you how to jazz up the store-brought ones. This is side dish glow up, hey! Yes! Yeah. Let's get it! Okay, Ooh. this is definitely one of my favorite things to do. I obviously love guacamole. Yeah. But let's face it, there can be a lot of steps involved in making it. So cut that time in half uh -huh. and go get you some store-bought Guac, guacamole. And then all you're gonna do is zhuzh it up. So all you're gonna need to do is put, uh, obviously you're gonna put the guac in a presentation bowl like this, a nice Ooh. glass bowl. Mm -hmm. Then you're gonna add some adobo. You gotta add the extra seasoning to the situation, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. Then you're gonna add in some diced onions, Ooh. like so. Lies. Then you're also, right, you're gonna uh -huh. add a little bit more of that. We're going to Mix this up. Ooh. Just am I the only one that really likes a lot of onions in my guac? No, I don't. Like oh, that. I love it. Then I be breathing on my man like hello. <laughs> oh, He's saying goodbye. Okay. No. <laughs> then after that, what you're gonna do is to make the presentation extra special so that uh, it looks extra elevated. Yes. Is you're going to sprinkle on top some cotija cheese like this. Uh-huh. Right? I'm gonna get a little bit more than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. That looks good. Then you're also going to add pomegranate seeds what? over the top so that this really feels homemade, but it actually feels very elevated. If you've ever gone to a shishi fufu restaurant that has guac, it comes like this. So now you're extra fancy with I've it. I've been to a shishi fufu before. Ooh. It has this, right? I've never seen that. Oh, you gotta no, try I, it. I ain't seen no It is a whole vibe. Seeds, but, and okay. then you're going to garnish it by just putting a little bit of cilantro on top. Cilantro. Like so, Ooh. some cilantro. Add it like that for a little bit of garnish. And voila, people will think that you we made got this. Five minutes. You okay. put your back <laughs> into it. <laughs> so tasty. There it is. Okay. It looks amazing, Abe. Uh, great job, A. Okay. I'm a good old-fashioned potato salad girl, but when I'm short on time, I pick up potato salad from the grocery store, add my Lonnie Love twist to it. Yes. I put the potato salad in the bowl, just like Adrian did her guac. I <laughs> add me some red onions. Nice. You know, you just add a little bit of salt and pepper. Yeah, you gotta oh, add the really? flavor, the extra yeah. seasoning, right? Yeah, that's usually what is missing is mm. a little more flavor. Yeah. Some paprika. Yes. Oh, that makes it look pretty. And you know, I like to add even more um, you know, hard-boiled egg slices yes. to it. Just, that's, nice. that's for the presentation, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then you stir it all up there. And then, if you want to add a kick to it, because most of the time it doesn't have this, you can add some Dijon. Dijon. Oh, Dijon, Dijon That's Dijon what monster. makes it homemade. Like, that's what gives it that favor. Question. Do you put raisins in it? No. no. <laughs> I don't put the raisins. Go sell over there. And then talk about good. Your guests will love this, and they'll never know it isn't homemade. Look at that. It looks like it's that looks looks so good. Oh, good. Now, who's got time for the fuss in the kitchen? Nobody. So, nobody. So I'd like to pick up the coleslaw from my market, can kick it up a notch. Just take a store-bought coleslaw, mm -hmm. add some diced onions, add some celery, oh. and some apples. Ooh, Ooh, you know, I love a little hint of Isn't sweet. Isn't that pretty? So good. And you just mix it up, and voila! Your coleslaw has gone from grocery to gourmet. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can't front. I, I actually, really know how to cook, you guys. I, I don't know what I've, I've <laughs> never loved coleslaw. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I want to see if this this makes the difference right uh, here. Okay, with oh, the acid. Yes. Mm. You like that? What do you think? You like that, don't you? Extra crunch. Mm -hmm. I want to try That's your guacamole. The apples giving, a little, it gives it a little bit of, of sweetness. I want to try it with a pomegranate. Yeah. Oh, go for it, I, go for I, it. I ain't trying that pomegranate one, you know. What do we feel? Yeah. A little something? Mm. A little something. I like there it. There you go. If you've ever hosted a party, then you know it's hard to have fun if you're playing bartender all day to your guests. Well, we've got a few recipes that'll take bartender off your list and make turning up priority number one. Hey. This is Barbecue Boozin'. <laughs>
you guys, the trick is to whip up a big batch of cocktails before the party. Yep. Then your guests can refill their own drinks, leaving you stress-free. Jeannie, tell us about the drink you made. Well, Tam, this is a raspberry and lime sparkler. Let me Ooh. tell you how I made it. So pretty, right? So I made a simple syrup by boiling one fourth a cup of water with two and a half teaspoons of sugar until mm -hmm. you dissolve it, just like this. Then after you let the mixture cool, you add one cup of lime juice, mm -hmm. a half a cup of vodka, and two cups of tonic water. Okay, you put it all together like that. Then you add in two cups of raspberries and one lime sliced in rounds like this, right? Lastly, right before you serve, you pour in a bottle of champagne, baby! Then. You can always double or triple the recipe, Lonnie, for Thank you, because I know how my girl likes your drinks, <laughs> depending on how large your container or pitcher is. Right. It's so light and refreshing, and I feel very classy drinking it. Try it, Tam. Ooh, okay. Ta -da. Ta -da. Cheers. That's such a pretty drink. It is. Thank cool. you. You do Thank look classy, you. Jeannie. Lonnie, what have you whipped up over there? Well, I made some boozy sweet tea. Here's yeah. what I did. First, I boiled six cups of water, turned it off, turned the heat off, then I steeped six bags of tea for five minutes. Let that tea cool down in the fridge for later. Next, I muddled sliced round, orange rounds and six sprigs of mint together, add a third cup of honey and a half a cup of bourbon. I add a little more than that. Then, <laughs> add to the tea in a large container because I add more. Oh. It tastes delicious. Yes. Yes, okay. That's that wow. is awesome. I bet it does, Lonnie. But yeah, that's better. Lonnie, that's better. you didn't party for me. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, oh. I could do something like <laughs> Adrian, bring it on home with your lovely red cocktail. How stunning does this look? Okay, I made a watermelon. Wow. I watermelon? Exactly. <laughs> I've been watermelon. drinking. Watermelon. <laughs> by chopping my watermelon into chunks just like this and removing the seeds. Next, I blended the chunks to liquefy them. Then I muddled 12 sprigs of mint okay. and poured it into five cups of watermelon juice, one cup of simple syrup, two cups of lemon juice, and two cups of gin, uh, or a little bit more. <laughs> then you're gonna stir it all together and your party will be rocking and rolling in no time. You put it in here just like this. How beautiful does this look like? Yeah, that right? does. It's beautiful. Summer is right around the corner and there's nothing quite like spending quality time with friends and family at an outdoor concert. Mm -hmm. You know what that means. Time to bring out the picnic basket. But even after you figure out the menu, there's still an art form to how to pack that basket itself. So we're gonna show you all the tricks. This is picnic basket balling. Oh. Okay, today I'm gathering with my closest friends for a fun <laughs> day of music and food and drinks. Good I time. can't wait to see what they brought for the basket. Mm -hmm. Hello, ladies. Happy Hi, summer. Lonnie. Happy summer, Lonnie. What did you bring for the basket? Okay, Lonnie. Well, I brought the appetizers. One of the big problems with picnic eating is that you never know how much to serve. Right. Not to mention you're constantly passing around containers. Look, Adrian. It's so good. And people are always picking at things, double dipping. It can be very annoying. Ah. So I found the ultimate solution. Look at this, you guys. Ice cube tray. That is so genius. That is so cool. Because genius. then, yes. everybody gets perfectly proportioned tray of apps. You've got your hummus, your olives, your crackers, your cheese cubes, your pasta salad, genius. and yeah. salami cubes for you, Tamara. Yay. And then all you have to do is just cap them up like this, pop them inside the basket, that and it's so enough cute. to start your meal without wasting any food. That is genius. That is right. so cool. That is so smart. Love Great it. idea. You know, and it's just simple to store it. Okay, and easy to eat. Now, what you bring, Munchkin? All right. I was in charge of packing the main course. And since we're eating outside, away from the kitchen, you want to make sure that, you know, you need as few plates, containers, and utensils as possible. Mm -hmm. That's why I made everything a one-stop shop with what? Mason jar meals, Ooh. you guys. Ooh. Smart. Here I have a few examples. A Cobb salad mason jar. Boom. Right here. A burrito bowl mason jar. Okay. And a chocolate pudding parfait for dessert. Oh, I love that. How awesome is that? Oh, I love good. It. So Another easy, easy packing solution. Yes. Okay, yes. Tamara, what's your yes, picnic basket? Okay, at? well, we're gonna get thirsty with all this food, right? Yes. Right. yes. But packing liquids is sometimes a gamble because drinks need to stay cool during these hot summer nights. Mm -hmm. Well, I found your new picnic basket staple. This is called the Chilsner by 
corksicle. What's Wait, that? Wait, what? Yes, it, it's, it's just a cork and it looks like an icicle. So all you have to do is freeze it, then stick it to any <gasps> bottle that fits. No. Yes, your drinks stay frosty cool, and you don't have to worry about spillage. Cool that off. is genius. Oh. Genius. That's so genius. genius. Yes. Thank you. Now we have cold water, Tamara. Yes. Well, you know what? This picnic might be over, but the concert is just beginning. I can hear them. And all of these picnic solutions are music to my ears. Yes. Now you'll be the picnic basketballers, too.